Wax chains are faster and they last longer, but there is a common mistake that many cyclists make, including myself, which actually takes away some of those benefits and makes them slower. But don't worry, I'm going to explain how much slower this makes your chain and how to avoid this simple mistake. So what is this big mistake? It's not properly breaking in your wax chain before you race on it. Now, how much slower does this make you? Well, experiments conducted by us at Silverstone on their efficiency rig suggested that a non-broken in wax chain, when it's still very stiff, was around five watts slower than a factory fresh greased chain um, that you would just get out the packet. Now, if you'd properly broken in your wax chain, we'd expect, having spoken to Silka, for that to be about a watt faster than the factory fresh grease chain. But wait a second! One watt doesn't sound like much. Why not just use the, the factory grease chain and then avoid the risk? I mean, surely that's a better option. Well, no, there's a catch. You see, while initially a factory grease chain does perform very well, it quickly deteriorates and accumulates dirt because it's so sticky. So you're looking after about 30 minutes, the wax chain will actually be outperforming it. And then after five hours of riding, it will be significantly outperforming it in terms of efficiency. Not to mention the fact that by not attracting as much dirt, it will be wearing at a much, much slower rate and therefore your components will also last significantly longer. Okay, so that sounds good. What is the issue here? Well, many of you compete in races, criteriums, or time trials that are typically less than an hour long. And a lot of people think, right, I've got this big race coming up, I want to be as fast as possible, so I'm gonna specially wax my chain and make it as fast as possible so that I can perform as, as well as I can. That's a thumbs up from me. And so then you get this wax chain and you fit it to your bike ahead of this important race, and then it's not broken in and it actually makes you slower. Now, this is a mistake that I've done myself. I've learned the hard way uh, when competing in 10 mile time trials. Luckily, this is something that is easily fixed and you don't need any fancy equipment or a fancy dynamometer to bench measure your chain so that it tells you when it's at its optimum efficiency. You can simply listen to it because noise is well, energy. Noise is a sign that there's greater friction in your chain. So by riding it on the turbo trainer, or you could ride it on the road prior to your event, you can break it in and you'll know when it's reached its broken in point because it will get a lot more quiet. I just would advise don't break it in on a dirty, wet road as that's probably not gonna make it faster as you're attracting dirt onto it. You can also feel the difference. Waxed chains are initially stiffer compared to unwaxed ones, and, well, they just don't bend and articulate in the way that they should. Now, a great hack to speed up the breaking in of your wax chain is, is to simply get a round bar and you could use a door handle or something, or I've got, I've got a bar and I've put it in a vise here and then pull the chain along it. Now, I've, this bar is metal. It'd be better if it was like nylon or plastic because it's not going to damage the, the actual chain metal itself, but this will be all right. Um, and well, if you want to do it next level, you could actually probably create some kind of like jockey wheel type thing that you could thread it on and pull it along, which would probably help and be, be even better. But um, yeah, let's simply do it like so. You can see just, just doing that for a few minutes then, the, uh, the excess wax is flaking off and this has already become a lot looser than it was when it was just sort of fresh out the pot and set. But I would still uh, continue to break this in now on the indoor trainer. So after waxing your chain and then loosening it off with a piece of dowel or similar, I find that for me, it's usually around 30 minutes of riding on the indoor trainer to break it in. But that is a rough guide. I do always listen to it for when it's gone quiet and then I know that it's, that it's good to go. There are several factors that do affect the amount of time it's gonna to take to break in the chain, and these are as follows. Firstly, the type of wax. Some waxers break in faster than others because they have different chemical compounds in them. The wax temperature is also a factor. So the temperature that the wax was when you removed the chain from the wax. 
colder temperatures mean that more wax sticks to the chain and therefore more has to kind of break off. The riding conditions that you ride in also play a part. Cooler climates make the wax harder, requiring a longer break-in time. The intensity of your ride is also important. So if you ride harder and also the gear that you're in can affect the break-in time. One of the advantages of, of the Silka bath that I'm using is that it is thermostatically controlled. So you set it to 75 and 75 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature to remove the chain from this particular wax. And that means that you get the, the right amount of, of wax on the chain um, because the waxes viscosity, chemistry word, um, the thickness of the liquid changes with regards to temperature. So if you remove it at too cold a temperature, you end up just like caking the chain in loads and loads of wax, which makes it real, well, it just increases the, the break in time and you just have too much wax on the chain. Whereas if, conversely, if it's too hot a temperature when you remove uh, the chain from, from the wax, you kind of, it's too runny and it just all drips off when you pull the chain out and you don't have enough wax on the chain, potentially. There are other ways you can do it, but this is just quite a convenient way. Now for longer events, if your chain isn't properly broken in, this is arguably less critical because while your chain might be not very efficient for the first 30 minutes, it will then become that and just become more and more efficient as the event goes on. And so that's all right. But just be in mind that if your event has a very fast start and you need to be performing optimally, as a lot of events often do to make an early selection or just be in that, that front bunch, it can be really important that you've still made that chain broken in before you take on your event. And another thing that can happen if your chain is too stiff when you start your ride is it can affect the shifting and cause your chain to just uh, bump off the gears and maybe even drop uh, your chain, which again would slow you down loads and arguably negate the benefits. So yeah, definitely worth knowing and don't make this mistake. Break in your chain before the big event would be my advice. I hope you found this useful and if you have, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to GCN Tech for more advice uh, in the future and hopefully see you in the next one. Love you, bye.